this is going to be a new series and it's called Chasing a Murderer. It's going to cover, um, of course, murderers, serial killers, and missing people as well. Hopefully some of these that I put out there might help somebody find or locate or give tips for those who are missing. Okay, we are going over to serial killer Bruce MacArthur. Bruce lived in the community in Canada uh, near Toronto. Um, he was considered to be an active member in the community. He also uh, was a landscaper and played the mall Santa Claus. He also used his Santa picture in his gay dating sites. He was arrested January 18, 2019, which is fairly recently. They arrested him on two charges, but once he was arrested, he uh, took responsibility of it. Um, I guess there's rumors that there's more, but he took the responsibility of eight, killing eight. The murders began, as far as they know, at the moment at the year 2010, I believe, and they continue up until just recently right before he got arrested Bruce has uh, two children of his own but there's no information on his relationship as of now he did enjoy going to the dating sites and especially the gay dating sites and meeting up with people where he loved to get a little bit into the the rough stuff and what we will listen to very shortly is a guy that I'm not certain if he's a friend but he's been titled as a friend to Bruce who supposedly escaped and here's a clip and rolling it was a beautiful sunny day clear 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 sky I um it was a daytime meeting I was supposed to be there about, to meet him, about 12 noon, I believe. Um, I was running a little bit behind, but I was in correspondence on the app saying, I'm running behind, just hold on for 15 minutes, and I was getting my stuff together. Um, and then I went to the, meeting, the designated meeting place, and that's... Uh, when I got in his uh, truck. When I got in the truck, I had a conversation with Mr. MacArthur about a serial killer being at large. When I said there was a serial killer, he didn't respond. It was just like, the conversation uh, kind of went into what he does for a living, which possibly could have been related, I guess, in hindsight. He did mention he had a roommate. He said it was just a roommate, um, that he was at work, and uh, that it was, wouldn't be a problem. And so I took that at face value. Um, and I went uh, to put on the things that he um, asked me to put on. And... Uh, he makes me a uh, drink. I was aware that he, um, there was GHB that was there. GHB is a drug that uh, causes a euphoria, um, puts you at ease, and makes you comfortable, and a little bit um, um, heightens the sexual encounter. Um, that's why I would take it. Um, if you do, there's a fine line with GHB because it is the date rape drug. If you go over, if you know what you're doing, you can certainly uh, knock someone up unconscious very easily. He, he was going to mix the GHB up for me, but I gave him instructions if he was not to do more than five mils because that would make me go to sleep uh that day it was agreed that i would uh 
submit to his experience that had been indicated on his profiles. His his big things, as I know them, were um, he liked to find submissives, find their um, buttons that he could push, find what their edge was, was yes, and then push them over it. The fear that I started to feel uncomfortable that day for the first time was I couldn't breathe. I, that's I have memories of of not being able to catch my breath throughout the beginning, um, early on, and that um, that uh, made me uncomfortable and, and put the rest first red flag up that I that I wanted to go home because he wasn't, I felt, respecting my limits. The shortness of breath was from specific acts he was, he was doing to me. Um, he was basically uh, raping my throat. Um, he was uh, uh, cutting off my airway. Um, and I was physically to the point where I was giving panic and I was panicked but in that type of play there's some expectation of trying to find that area where it's it's close to the edge um, but at that point it was that's the only memory I have from it is that it just this overall I couldn't breathe I couldn't breathe I couldn't breathe how is he cutting off your airway like I said, like with it, with a, um, his penis, um, with uh, his hands, uh, with his body weight sitting on my chest. When you play with someone in that this the, the proper environment, it's built on safe, sane, and consensual, and they're safe words. And he wasn't giving in to the indicators that I was not being able to catch my breath um and at this point i'd started to sweat quite a bit which for me would be an indicator that i was drugged strong more um i had a larger dose than what i would have uh, noticed normally when i started to feel uncomfortable i think at that point that may have been the point where it was too late for me to to um, know what was happening to a degree, because I think I at that point I may have fall, uh, gone unconscious. I know there um, has been evidence that has been suggested by the police that. Um, I was unconscious, and in that evidence, there is definite signs that I was in a position bound and ready to be killed. I don't know how long I was unconscious, so, but there was, at that point, I could hear the roommate was home. And the roommate was like, ha, like I didn't hear him come in the front door and that sort of noise. So the roommate was well in the apartment for a period of time by the time I was aware of him. And I did say to um, Bruce, I said, oh, your roommate's home. Like, uh, like, and I was starting to use this as my way to like, and end this and uh, he, he said the words not until I come first I asked to go home he said I have one more task to perform and then I gathered my stuff and I, I don't remember getting home that day I don't remember how I left when the police detective brought to my attention the fact that they had photographs of me, 
because she she was asking if I saw cameras, if I, if I, and I didn't remember any cameras. Um, but then when it was winding down, and I knew at this point there were photos of me, um, I asked her if, um, like, how do you, like, how do you know? Like, I, I still wasn't ready to believe that I was that victim. And, uh, she said to me, um, that I was, I was bound. I was in pretty much, for lack of a better term, because I can't disclose everything, um, a, a kill position for him. And it, I, why it stopped, I don't have all the information the police have. All I can go on is my, what I, I think. And it's the roommate coming home, interrupting his, whatever his process is or his ritual. And uh, thank God for me. It hadn't dawned on me until we got further along in the conversation how much danger I was in that day and how close I was to not coming back. Um, okay, that was a hard interview to listen to, but um, as we look into his face here, you can see he has a lot of pain. The thing is, uh, I'm having trouble whether to feel sorry for him or not because of the fact, you know, you cannot go out there and meet strangers, guys. Come on. Your body is your temple. You need to be careful who you allow enter your temple. People really do not value themselves very much anymore. But anyways, uh, just get off that. He went through a lot and he is very lucky to be alive so bruce was very very uh rough with the guy and he had no clue because of the drugs he was taking now i have another friend that also escaped bruce's clutches so uh i'm gonna roll that in the second part because i make these on my phone and I only have so much memory. So, uh, this is the end of part one. Part two coming.